Hello, I am Mr. Fixit from ES Repair. In my previous videos, I have shown how to use Minitools Shadow Maker to create a backup for your disks, partitions, files, and folders, as well as syncing your files and folders to an external drive. I've also shown you how you can manage your backups and how to handle and browse for your restore if you need to access any files in that backup. Well, in this video, I'm going to show you how to create an emergency boot disk and also show you how you can add a boot menu to your computer in the event that your computer crashes or will not boot, you'll have an alternative to access your data to restore it. To begin, we'll click on tools. Here you'll see this window here with these tools that you can use. Uh, the two we're going to focus on in this video is the Minia Boot Builder. Uh, what this will do is use either a CD or a USB flash drive, or you can use a USB hard drive. Uh, this can be used to boot up your computer in the event that it won't boot up. Uh, also, you have an, another one here, which I haven't seen before. Uh, this one here would come in handy because this one allows you to add this to the boot menu. So when your computer boots up, you have a choice either to continue with Windows or you can go into the Shadow Maker recovery. The first thing I'm going to show you is the Media Builder. Uh, what you do is go ahead and click on it. The window will come up and you're going to see, please select the media type. And the first one you'll see is the Windows pre-installation environment based media with Mini Tools plugin. Now, this is option will provide compatibility with the computer's hardware. Now, if you're using dynamic disks or a RAID setup, then what you need to do is click Options. And here you're going to see the drivers necessary for the pre-installation environment. As you can see here, I do have some drivers that need to be uh, installed. Uh, if you don't see the driver listed here, uh, you can choose Detect Drivers. Uh, any new drivers that it detects will be added to the list. Now, if you still do not see the driver that you need, then you can go up here and click Add Drivers to add them manually. Once you've completed the task, click Next. First option is the ISO file. Now, this creates a uh, an image, and this way you can uh, use it on any computer uh, if you need to use it to uh, create a a bootable CD. Uh, you can also use a USB flash disk. Uh, you can also use USB hard disks. Now before that you use a flash disk or a hard disk, make sure that there's no data on that drive that you need to keep because when you create this boot disk, everything on that drive will be deleted. Uh, if you need to use your CD drive, uh, it shows the two CD writers on here. Uh, this is because there are two drives I have installed. What you'll do in this case, I am going to use the CD drive. Or maybe not. This one here is the wrong one. Let me use this one. Now, you'll see this message here. Uh, if you're sure you want to burn to the CD or DVD, I'm going to choose yes and it's going to begin the process of doing this. Now, with CDs, it's going to take a few minutes. Um, you also can boot up from these CDs, and I'll show you what happens once this is completed. Once the builder has completed the task, uh, you're going to see this screen here, and all you need to do is click Finish and take the CD out of the drive or safely remove the USB drive. Now, let me go ahead and show you how this process will work when you boot up the computer. Now, oftentimes you'll see a prompt like this. Just press any key and it'll begin loading the files. Now, you're going to see the program come up and you're going to see the message here. Just click OK. And again, just click OK again. Now, when the program restarts, uh, it looks pretty much just like the the program when it was running in normal mode, but you'll notice here that it will come up under Restore. Uh, this will have a list of any backups that you may have. Um, if you need to add a backup, if it's not listed here, 
uh, just do as I showed you in the managing backups and then you can locate the backup to be able to restore from it. Now be sure to if you're using a USB flash disk or a USB hard drive to store your backups be sure that it's plugged in uh, before you start up the computer. Now it works just like uh, as before uh, you have your backup options if you want to back up the computer while you're in this mode. Um, your sync files if you need to do that you can do all that. Uh, the biggest function of this is to restore the computer or restore the hard drive. Now you can manage your uh, backups. The tools uh, here you'll notice that they're different. Uh, while you're in the Windows pre-installation environment you'll see that you can use a command shell and this is just the the DOS prompt that some of you are probably familiar with. Uh, you could do all kinds of stuff using the command prompt. Uh, Universal Restore, uh, what this one is, this is a uh, restore type of restore that I mentioned earlier. And what it is, is it allows you to uh, pick and choose and restore certain files based upon the changes and stuff. Now I will go through this uh, later on uh, when I do the restore series to show you how to restore your from your backup. Uh, you also have a clone disk. Uh, if you're going to be moving your hard uh, your operating system from the hard drive to a solid state drive, then you want to go into this environment uh, in order to be able to safely clone the hard drive over to the solid state drive. Once that's completed, then you can just switch the hard drives out and your computer will boot for the new solid state drive. Or if you need to replace your drive, then this will come in handy so you can replace it. Well, this is pretty much how it works. Uh, so let me go ahead and show you how the boot menu works. Now, once you're closed out of the Mini Tool Shadow Maker, you'll come to this screen that we saw a moment ago. Uh, here, if you needed to, uh, you could either reboot, shut down. Uh, here, if you do need to um, load some additional drivers for your computer, in this uh, pre-installation environment, then this will give you the option to load those necessary drivers. Uh, here you can also launch the command console and you can also initiate the SCSI initiator uh, to help you be able to launch your uh, disks or network devices. Well, once you've completed the tasks at hand, you can just simply come to reboot or shut down and then this way, uh, uh, shut down your computer or it will restart it. I'm going to go ahead and click reboot. And you're going to get the message here. Are you sure you want to reboot the computer now? Yes. Now on this part, I'm going to show you how to create the boot menu. Uh, in Windows 8 and Windows 10, uh, you can create a boot menu. So when a computer boots up, you can choose between the Windows operating system or the Mini Tool Shadow Maker's pre-installation environment in order to do any kind of restores that you may need to do. It comes in handy uh, if you're having trouble booting up to Windows, but it brings you to the boot menu so you can switch over to uh, the Mini Tool Shadow Maker and be able to restore your data. Now to do this, you'll go up here to the top and go to Tools. And then what you want to do is go to Add Boot Menu. Here, this is going to give you the option. This is what it's going to do. Now, it does give you the option to add and remove it. So, uh, if you decide that you don't longer want that boot menu, you can just go back into this and you can delete the boot menu that you see over here on the left. So, what we're going to do is I'm going to add the boot menu. And it's going to confirm if you do, are you sure that you want to add the boot menu now and just choose yes. Once it's been added successfully, you'll get the pop-up showing that it has been successfully added. Just choose OK. When you first boot the computer up, you're going to see these options. Now, yours will be different. I know, you'll notice that there's two of them on here. Uh, this is because this one here is my old hard drive. Um, it went bad and I still have it plugged in so I can still get the data off of it. And 
you'll notice down here it'll show mini tool recovery environment and what this will do is to load you into the in pre-environment that we had earlier so anytime that you start a computer this gives you an easy access way to either go to windows or you can immediately go into the mini tools recovery environment one last thing that i would like to share with you uh, from my experience of using this software is if you are the best thing to do is use an external hard drive uh, you can get these in very large capacities. Um, I've seen them as large as 10 and 12 terabytes. Um, if you're going to be a serious backup uh, with your computer, then you need something that can handle all the backups that you're going to need to keep. It's best if you're going to use the USB hard drive because what happens is, is it will create two partitions. And let me show you what I mean. Uh, here I'm using Mini Tools Partition Wizard, which I do have a video about how to use this. Uh, if you're, anybody's interested in watching that, I'll include the link down below. Now here, you'll see here where it says Disk 6. Um, I have it highlighted here. Uh, this is what it actually does to the drive. Uh, it creates its own little partition, which is this one here. Uh, it's about a gigabyte in size, and this is for the boot information. So when you plug the drive in, it can boot from this partition. The rest of the partition is left to where you can store data on it. So this is a great idea and it works wonderfully. And all you have to do is just stick the drive in there and your computer will boot up from it. And then you can use this partition here to store all of your backups. So you'll have everything in one single place. Well, this concludes this video. I'm Mr. Fixit from ES Repair. I do have some more videos coming up. Uh, I still have the uh, restore section to do, and I do have some uh, disk cloning and stuff that I'm going to show you how to do. So please stay tuned while I get the videos ready and have them uploaded. Well, this has been a presentation from ES Repair. Thank you for watching.